but cash shit, man. Man, I love it, man. I love it. What's up, bro? Popping, bro. What's going on, man? Good to see you, bro. Yes, sir. Got my guy here, man. <laughs> Special episode of When the Ball Stops Bouncing. Um, I'm trying to think, how would I introduce Obi? Well, I took some notes. It's only one way to introduce Obi, right? So, um, let's see. What is Nike, Puma, Gucci, Bose, AT&T, Netflix, Amazon Prime, CBS, Oh, and let's not forget, we got a track and field <laughs> aficionado, MVP, four-time school record holder in multiple events, all mm -hmm. ACC honors, Yep. fastest 400 runner in school, entrepreneur, model, fashion designer, Mr. I'm Verified in Real Life, you can have the internet, <laughs> my guy, Obi, what's up, baby? Yes, sir. Yo, Thank appreciate you. you, bro. I appreciate, appreciate that you. intro. Of course, of course. I almost forgot I ran track. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a minute, right? It's been a minute. It's so that's been like, a full minute. I think that's the funniest thing about sports, right? I think mm -hmm. they're like, you know, there was a point of our life where we woke up every day and we're like uh, tearing up our sneakers wow. and we're forcing the issue mm -hmm. in that sphere, but like now it's so much more to us. So mm -hmm. um, when the ball stops bouncing, I'm really curious for you to tell your, uh, your story. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we're bro. here for a reason. I don't, I don't know if you want to tell the people where we are, man. Where are mm -hmm. we at? What's, what's, what's going on? Talk to so them. So right now we're in, we're in the Beverly Center in Beverly Hills. Okay. Um, so this is the store 8586. Okay. It's one of two black owned um, stores in the whole Beverly Center. So uh -huh. you got brands like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Bloomingdale's, they're all here. Okay. And so are we. Come on, man. Exactly. On, so man. like it's really powerful like what's happening <laughs> right now. Like <laughs> it doesn't happen often. Um but yeah, we're we're here in Beverly Hills. It's a Sunday and like honestly it's the Lord's Day, so I feel blessed. Like. Man, man. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow, 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 yeah. wow, wow. So okay, we're in a Beverly Center, we're in a store, but we're mm -hmm. not just in a store, we're in a store because of not water. So let's yes. talk a little bit about <laughs> not water and um I think we'll get into the sports and how like you've been a successful athlete, but man, mm -hmm. you got this drip on, man. We gotta <laughs> talk about the drip, man. Let's talk so, about the drip. So, some light, uh this is actually a new piece uh that we've been working on and this is actually called our Cybertron piece. Um so I like creating really cool names like for all of our pieces. Um, and I feel like that kind of just stems from like me as a kid, yeah. you know, like one of my favorite movies was Transformers. Okay. Like I loved Shia LaBeouf. I loved just like that whole, like, I love that whole series. So yeah. like one of my pieces named Megatron okay. this is Cybertron. And like every single time I level up, I, I like go to a new transform. Yeah, I would yeah. transform. So like <laughs> I was funny. Megatron and I was like, yo, how does like, so I'll show you Megatron right now. Like, Ooh. Oh, see, I can just Automatic pull the pieces drip. right Automatic there. Drip. Yeah, yeah, you know, we got the piece. <laughs> so this is Megatron, and I was like, "All right, how does Megatron evolve?" Yeah. So I created <laughs> Cybertron, and now this is our Cybertron drip. So That's like, fine. I think a thing that always challenges me is like, for me to elevate from this drip, and like, so in uh, Transformers, it's like they're you're a Decepticon, and like that, that it just. So many levels because it's like shades of like um, like an octagon. So it's like you're developing more sides, which yeah. means like you're kind of like spreading out your wings. So if I want to create it or elevate this piece, I have to like actually make it happen. So okay. like that's kind of like you know rule breaker for me. It's like so it always challenges my creativity. I love that man. Yeah. I love that. So so when you say challenges your creativity, how do you even come up like conceptually? Like I, I, I got this strip on. You know, this, <laughs> yeah yeah. This ain't nothing too crazy. You know what Tron. I'm, I'm really you know this, this is just Tron. There's no mega in this Tron. You know what I'm saying? So like when you, when you find a piece like this, like is there is there something that motivated you? Did you find mm -hmm. any inspiration? Did you see something? Or did you just pull us out of your head? Yeah, so honestly, with pieces, especially this one, a lot of this inspiration came from just working, having an amazing team. Mm. So, like, I feel like I always surround myself with people who challenge me. Mm. So, like, even when I created Megatron, right. I had a member on my team who I'd been working with, this designer, Miles. He's like, bro, he, he'd been working on some crazy stuff. And he's like, bro. And when I saw it, I was like, bro, we're going to elevate this, and it's going to be Cybertron. Fine. And, like, so it's, like, about... God really putting certain people around because at the end of the day, like I'm also being a vessel, like, mm. you know, so it's like, I'm, I'm only able to do it as much as God is able to bring the people around 100%. me. So it's like, I never take full credit for anything. For me, I need great manufacturers. Mm. I need great sewers. I need great people who can bring all my visions to life because from if I want to operate the business on a daily level, I can't do it myself. It's yeah. like, I'm about to post on social, do this, do, yo, right now someone's making a piece. Right now someone's True. posting on our social media. True. Right now someone's answering an email. Right now, so it's like, there's so many things. So it's like, 
these are things that I love to do. So mm-hmm. it's like, I always credit it to the team. Like, you know, I always, if I feel like someone's better than me or operating a higher level than me, great. Bring, bring him in. Bring it in. I'm not bring a friend. Like I'm not, in, I'm actually, I embrace that. I'm like, yo, there's actually levels that I can reach better than this. Yeah, so yeah. that's the most exciting thing for me. Okay, like, okay, 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 yeah. okay. Yeah. So you're saying a lot, you're saying a lot. So, mm-hmm. Where did this mindset come from, right? Like, I understand, like, okay, you created the drip, right? You understand mm-hmm. teams. You understand, like, how, you know, business should operate. But yeah. let's, let's, let's take a couple steps back. Let's talk mm-hmm. about Obi as a kid. Where are you from originally? Yeah, so I, I grew up in Boston. I'm from, I'm Nigerian. I'm from Nigeria. Mm. And I actually had an interesting childhood where I grew up in Boston, was immediately brought back to Nigeria. Oh, no. And then immediately brought back to the... So it was just like, you yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But these are things I'm told. But I'm like, yo, imagine me living... Uh, I'm just, yeah. you know, as a kid going back and forth, but really ended up settling um, my foot in Boston and like growing up in like in Nigeria. Boston was amazing because it had a, a big Nigerian community. Oh, so wow. it was I like... I was surrounded by Nigerians every... Any day I went to church, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. which was, as a kid half the time right, like, right. At, at that time so like half the time I was surrounded around um, by Nigerians and then um, so I just got a, a lot of amazing cultural experiences just because I was kind of in like a melting pot grew up in like you know um, just like the inner city and then also got to experience the bourbon town so really got to have that balance like and I think that's really I think that's helped me because my interpersonal skills and how I communicate is just a little different just because I can balance. Of course, yeah. of course, of course. <laughs> so, so, so that's where you know that's where you and I have a lot in common. Based mm-hmm. off twenty three and me, I'm actually Nigerian as well. Hey, so yes, you know, sir, yes, like, sir. We are here. You know yes, sir. Saying? But I never had the privilege of of, of living. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. on the motherland, being in Africa. I've never had that privilege. I've gone to Africa, but mm-hmm. I've never lived in Nigeria. So, what was that like for you? Nigeria, life changing. Wow. Honestly, like I still. There's, there's parts of me that loves L.A., parts of me that loves America. But when mm. I went to Nigeria, I felt like that was me. Mm. And it was like the weirdest feeling because I never felt like that any other place on earth. No like, way. From the second, you, you get embraced with love. People want to know more about you. People, are, like, they're embracing, like, fully embracing yeah. you. Like, And then also another thing that was interesting for me was um, Nigeria, like, being able to experience both sides. There's the village that is widely commercialized throughout, you know, just the world, like Africa being this sort of place. But then there's also the side that's like the city, like the people who are lit. Like yeah, there's always course, two of sides course. of that. Of there's, course, of course. There cannot just be all poor. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> we know. The Someone is resource. rich. Like, yeah, they're, exactly. Yeah. They're, and like, so it's like, I got to see... The other side of Nigeria, and that's what mm-hmm. opened. Up. I was like, "Oh, this is this place is being marketed completely the oh wrong way." Gosh. And like, I when I came back from Nigeria, someone's like, "How would you explain?" It? I'm like, "It's a mixture of New York, L.A., Dubai, like Miami, really, like all in one." Yeah, because yeah. you can stay out till five seven, so really? you're in Miami, low key. Oh, wow. But yeah. it's also warm all the time, so you're low key in L.A. But you don't have to do the party stuff. You can mm-hmm. go venture out, go on the beach, venture do shop do whatever you want people don't think you got that you but vi lagos like eric Accra, yeah. which is in ghana like these areas are very commercialized so like they're offering the same type of things and then you got the miami vibes because if you want to get lit in the middle of the day you're going to get lit That's an option, right? exactly yeah, 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 yeah. and then you got dubai because dubai you're going there for the ex- like how extravagant it is like oh nigerians you never have you seen you thought 10 bottles was cool in a club yeah. they'll bring out crates what They're like oh we ordered a crate i'm like what oh this is a whole new terminal oh, <laughs> he's okay. ordering bottle service he's ordering crate service yeah, there's different. a difference it's different don't yeah. compare don't yeah. be mad if you compare them like. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool no that's, that's cool i mean and again like it's, it's one of those things like again having a privilege of going to africa mm-hmm. everyone should experience it right as soon 100%. as you get off the plane weirdly enough you feel like you're at home I, oh, you, I, like I couldn't agree with you more. It mm-hmm. feel to me, it felt like LA. Yeah, right. It was like you still have the houses in the hills. You still mm-hmm. like have the views. It's, you still you got all that because LA is two dichotomies, like where people don't understand. Yeah. Like I, you can go, you can dr- you 
have, got to drive to downtown all yeah. the time. Like I drive to downtown areas like that, and you're like, "Yo, is it? Am I still in the same LA? Because yeah. you yeah. might have just slid in Beverly Hills, yeah. gone to Korea yeah. downtown. Yeah. yeah, it's you're getting three different outlooks Night on life. Like, yeah. like yeah. in like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not that much time. So it's like Nigeria is very similar. Like you can see a. You can go from someone begging on the street, which is the same thing in LA, to right. you're pulling up in a mansion. Yeah. Like yeah. so. Yeah. So so okay okay. Um, let's think about this. So you you live in Boston, then you live back in Nigeria. When did like how did sports start to trigger mm -hmm. or change or like really just start to shape you as a person? When did you start playing sports? Yeah, I would say it was it was around like ten, like nine. I I think I was always playing sports like to some extent but mm -hmm. i think like when it triggered as like a thing yeah was like probably maybe like third grade when i moved into oh, my shit. new town like because yeah. i think when i lived in the inner city like everyone's good mm. and no one i think the issue with i think at that time why i don't have much recollection because yeah. everyone was good mm. and i think when you're growing up in an environment like that they're not going to literally let you know how good you no, are of course not. so it's of like you not. don't you just yeah. with it like you play you know you might i've been catching odell's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> one was saying nothing right, like, right, right. <laughs> you know? so it's like no one tells you that you're good but when I moved to the suburbs, I think that's when I realized I was good at sports, yeah. like actually good because it was, you do something, people are like, whoa, like yeah, they're, that? yeah, they're like, hey, you're on my team. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. People you. used to be like, I mean, you're all right, but we're going to pick you. Th like they're yeah. going to keep you humble. Yeah, like, yeah. like you don't even know it's that's happening. Cool. Like, you don't even, that's cool. so I think I realized that when I moved to the suburbs, like unfortunately, and then I just started to slowly tap into a different element. You start winning and then you just start Honestly, you just start winning. Yeah. That's it. Like yeah. sports, all you can do is win. That's, that's kind of what gives no, you the all confidence. That that's and all like, that matters. I did that in multiple sports. Like I tried everything. I tried baseball. I tried basketball. I tried football. I tried track, tennis, soccer. Like everything. Like, yeah. And so like I was good at all of them. And then the issue was I had to pick which one. That's what I'm like. How do you choose? Like that's way like I would have decision fatigue. How do you mm -hmm. choose what sport? How did you know? Okay, I'm good at all this. What am I the best at? How do you figure out what you're the best at? Yeah, it's crazy enough. I if I had the choice today, I probably would have played baseball or basketball. No way. Yeah, like baseball was like one of those sports I loved. Like okay. it had it had it had my heart like early on, but um, honestly, when I got to high school. Um, I, I think so when I got to high school I just played I just played I didn't run track yet in, in high school oh really so I was I was playing football in the mm -hmm. fall I was playing basketball in the winter and baseball in the spring I had to stop soccer in the fall because of yeah. football um, and then I had to stop casually playing tennis I had to stop swimming because that was a winter sport so I just started cutting off things I was like ah screw it like yep, 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 just yep. get where your energy's from yeah, and like yeah, you know yeah, also I was like yo football fuck I go to league. <laughs> like, so these are, <laughs> people start feeding those things into you. Of course, if you you could go, go to the NBA, you could go this, or you could be a pro. Because mm -hmm. I um, and I got to high school. I did my first season of football. Did my first season of basketball. I ended up getting most improved for basketball because like I started off the season trash. Yeah. Ended up just finishing the season like averaging almost like twenty points a game. <laughs> like. Just there's one game I just didn't even miss a shot, right? Like, oh, 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 like and I think that's what uh, yo, you definitely improved, right? Like, <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, uh, uh, most okay. improved. Yeah. This nigga didn't miss, yeah. <laughs> like, I think he got it, I think he got it, I, I like, got it. and then and then I um, I had to decide between baseball and uh, track, which was probably the hardest decision because mm -hmm. that was the sport I loved the most. Um, and I just ended up trying track, and I did. I gradually did well, mm -hmm. and I think the gradualness of my improvements on a first-time sport right. made me want to stay with it. Because okay. all the other sports I had played it yeah. up until then, and I saw the improvements, but I never saw jumps like this, like where I'm taking, like, I'm damn well going from, like, a D3 prospect to a D1 overnight. Right. Like, so for me, that was the selling point. Like when my coach kind of pulled me aside, he's like, yo, based off where you're running right now, yeah. there's no way you're not going D1. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. there's just no way. So he's like, we started to have this talk, like, all right, he started gearing my mind towards like trying to be the best in the country, just right. being the best wherever I was. Like it wasn't, I, I stopped worrying about going division one. Like, right. It was like set that. in at mm -hmm. like 14. And he's like, bro, you're running what these D1s are running right. at 14. Mm. Like, so he's like, just based off your natural and how your body's going to progress, you're going to get there. You're going to get so there. So don't yeah. worry about that. 
you, you actually just need to stay healthy and you're going to yeah. get. Yeah. So he gave me that confidence early on and he was a hard ass. Like he was on my. So I think that's when I started to realize it from when I was 14 and then just this whole suburban switch. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so having, cause, cause coaching mentors, uh, life lessons is so much a part of who we are, what we do, 100%. right? How we keep going, right? Um, was there a coach in particular that gave you any life lessons? Was there mm -hmm. a moment in your life where you said, hey, look, this is really a turning point. This is who I am, right? Yeah. Was there a moment for you? Yeah, there was, it, it was at, it was at 13, 14, um, freshman year. And it was, I think the first week of track practice. Mm. Um, Cause I came in this athlete who had basically done everything. I'm yeah. just doing track as y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. called me here. Yeah, like y'all brought me here. Yeah, I'm yeah, just, I'm yeah, fast. Y'all yeah, yeah. yo, yo knew that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why y'all asked me here. Y'all yeah. try to get me from the football basketball yeah. team. So yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's like all, none of y'all were on the football basketball team besides me. Sure. And none of y'all played. I don't recognize a starter here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> so like that was my, so it was like, I got humbled real quick mm -hmm. in the sense where it's a different type of muscle and endurance that you had to work. And I remember we, we had to do um, bear crawls ac across the football field and coach purposely did on the football field because he was like, oh, you're a football player. So this is oh, easy wow. for you, right? Yeah, yeah. So we'll just do 100. We'll just do the full football field, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Sure. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, like this is easy. And like, I think when I started seeing other people, because these are the same drills that people had been doing in the winter, mm -hmm. in the fall with him. He had been there all year. Got it. And I'm you seeing, were playing another sport. I was playing other sports. And that's when I realized it's all a different muscle. And like, I had to humble myself to every sport. And right. So I think that's where the, like, I became very teach. I became very coachable. Like that was something I always got early on. Like this guy, he's easy to work with. Mm -hmm. He's easy to work with. Like none of my coaches ever had, because they're not coaching me. I'm, I'm trying to beat myself. Right, like, of course, of course. Screw it. Yo, you're, I'm going to take what you're saying, but I'm going to see what you're saying, both doing, and I'm going to try to do something like that. Like, yeah. So they never really had to coach me. I was always – I was. if you told me to work out five days a week, I'm probably doing seven. Right. Like, so, like <laughs> – yeah. No, no you, you, you're saying some real, right? Because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, I always say, like, you could never – be harder on me than I am on myself. You yeah. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like, um, when I think about my athletic career, it was always like, all right, cool. Well, I know Obi likes to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. That's your time. You're going to go hard Monday, Wednesday. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there, right? Yeah. I'll kick your ass Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But then I have somebody else that wants to be there Tuesday, Thursday. I have someone else that does Saturday mm -hmm. only, right? So yeah. I want to get your best every time we go to the gym, right? Mm -hmm. So being coachable, setting my goals, kicking your ass, right? Yeah, like, exactly. That's what I live to do, you know what I mean? <laughs> so if we can get in there, we can grind and get better. Mm -hmm. If we can get better, then the team gets better. At the end of the day, we all reach our goals. So that's, 100%. that's fire, bro, like, and being coachable. Um, so... How do you, uh, and, and I want to get to the business side, but then I'm also curious because, yo, know, like you said that you kept getting better mm -hmm. and better in track. So um, let's, let's, let's stay on, stay on track and let's mm -hmm. hear about, so 13, 14, you're killing it. Now you go, how do you get to college? Like what, what, what's, yeah. what's that look like? So it started, so I think, so let's just say it's uh, 14 because high school basically 14 through 18. Yeah. Um, my freshman year, I think I came out out the gates. So my 400 time, I was running. My first time was like 75 seconds, yeah, yeah. which is a minute and 15 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm not. You times that by a mile. We're not running. That's not a fast mile. No, not yet. Like, not, yet not even <laughs> like you know. I'm not doing that. So that was my first time ever. So like that was a real like coming off being a football player like basketball. That was a real humbling thing. So like. And then that was coming off of like our the training we were already doing with the bear crawls, mm. all that. So like, oh, bro, you're not even that fast. Yeah, bro, come on, chill. I'm like, are you even athletic? <laughs> they're, 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 they're like, they're like, and now everyone's jokes is like, yo, other sports, y'all aren't good at track, yeah. and that's kind of like a yeah. running joke, like between like you know, well, you, you know, like. In basketball, big mm -hmm. men run like a big man has to run a mile in six minutes, right? So yeah. let's just go one fifteen by four. And that's six minutes. Right? Exactly. So basically, like, run like a seven footer. Like on, on, on a seven footer, yeah. they're, they're like, all right, seven yeah. footer, like nice time. Yeah. Like they're like, you, we have females running faster than you. One Do you want to practice thousand. with the girls? Yeah. <laughs> and for me, like things like that, I'm just not gonna take. Right. I'm like, nah, we're gonna fix this. Like, and so I just kept on. I think I went from seventy five to sixty two. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, like, no, I dropped 13, like, I wasn't, because 
Now we're talking. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> 75 to 62, went, sub, went 57, and then, long story short, just basically finished the season off at, like, 52, 53. Oh so, like, I dropped in a season, like, almost 22, 23 seconds. Mm. Like, mm. and it was every race was, like, the 13 was the big jump, but then the coach was like, bro, this guy's dropping, like, at least one to four seconds yeah. a meet, like, yeah. on yeah. average. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, if I didn't drop time, it didn't make sense. And, like, that was just kind of, like, a gradual thing I did with track. And it just got harder and harder. Like, second year, yep. I was – so I came in, freshman 53 runner, which put me, like, top 10 in the state. Yeah. Um, and then second year, just knocked it – I think I was, like, dropped it, like, almost like an average of half a second. Wow. Um, so I finished the season, like, 51. Junior year, I started hitting, like, 50s consistently. Like, now colleges are looking at – you can go to any school in Massachusetts anyway, you know, yeah. at, at yeah. that point. But then if you go under 50, you get national attention. Oh, wow. So um, I'd gone under 50 for a couple of splits, which are relay times. Mm -hmm. But that gets people excited because they're like, okay, you know, someone on you. We can use this guy. Yeah. yeah, usually it's your anchor who ran the fastest. They're like, mm -hmm. who's your anchor? They're like, well, mm -hmm. this guy, Obi, he ran a yeah. 50. And they're like, okay, I think that split's pretty accurate. That's so cool. And then senior year, I came out the gates. I ran 49 in the oh, first God. meet. Like, I didn't even <laughs> run with high school kids. I, oh, my God. I said, I was one of the, like... By the time senior year came, I, I was like, yo, I'm Massachusetts is such like a small there's there's only I could count how many kids on my hand were faster than me at that right, point. Right, like yeah. in the whole entire state. And I didn't personally know these kids. These yeah. are just kids I'm seeing on paper. But I bet they knew you. Exactly. Yeah. Like they, we, it's like yeah. we stick with, if we see oh let's go to summer. Oh that's it. Like yeah. we, we secretly know each other but we don't act, and social media wasn't around. So sure. it's like they sure. were unless I add you on MySpace, yeah, like yeah. am I actually not making like, my top eight? Don't yeah, worry. Like, it's like, bro, happen, yeah. So it's like everyone kept their distance. I think nowadays it would have been cool because it probably would have been completely different. We yeah. probably would have been like cool trying to figure out how to train with each other, but at that time there was no connection. So I'm just looking at this paper. I'm like, I can't find a person in my vicinity I can even train with that's on my level. Mm. So I wow. just went to a college meet. And I, I went to, it was a Boston University meet. Um, it was the first meet of the year. So BU was running. And then people from outside areas could sign up independently. So I, I paid for myself to sign up independently. I was working at Starbucks. So I had a little money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little exactly. So I was like, yo, yeah. I'm just going to sign up for the meet. And I signed up for the meet. And I ran like 49.7 or 49.6 and I qualified for nationals on the first meet. Oh, wow. And like that's basically what opened up the doors because there were – all the colleges were there. Yeah. And yeah. I beat the college kids. Mm. And I was, in, I, was a senior, so I was a senior in high school. So, so interesting. And it was an indoor track, which is harder to run that time Got on it. an indoor track because you're running against banks and stuff. So it was – yeah. That, that's that, fire. Yeah, that's kind of what yeah. – and from there I got contact by – UConn, BC, U Michigan, Stanford, Harvard, UVA, um, UMass, UR, just every school yeah, in the area. Yep. And I had good grades too, so I wasn't all those schools I was already I was already qualified getting, for, yeah, right? I was already yeah. getting so I can get in as a student or I can get in as an athlete, but mm -hmm. in this case, you guys can get me for both. Right? Exactly. So, so it opens up it opens up a lot of doors. So mm -hmm. um so you talk about being most improved uh, mm -hmm. on an athletic field, right? You talk about it in, in basketball, right? Mm -hmm. You talk about it in track, right? Now, because obviously those numbers that you're shading off, um, that's a testament to your hard work. Mm -hmm. What do you credit your hard work to? Like, I, like mm -hmm. what drives you? Do you constantly just have a chip on your shoulder? Why are you like this? Yeah, I, I would say, like, probably started, like, early on, like, as a kid, like, I think, like, my parents got divorced early on. Okay. I feel like every person who's, like, successful kind of went through some sort of tra childhood trauma. Without a doubt. And yeah. I feel like maybe that kind of fueled me, just, mm. like, maybe, like, a lack of something and always wanting to fill that void. Yep. But then it also came, I'm just on a simplicity level, like, I'm one of those people, like, if I, <laughs> I could literally go to my story, and if I see you working out and I haven't worked out, that's it, no. like... I, the, on my days off, I should not check my phone because it's not about to be a day off no more. Like it's like it's little things like that. I'm like, nah. Yep. There's so no like way. like for me as an athlete, I'm a statistician. Like yep. so, I'm looking at the top guys in the state. I'm looking at guys in New England, around the country. I'm like, how can I position myself for, to be and have a successful career in track? And yep. like every single time in high school, I I just said my goals were never over. They were very realistic in what I was willing to 
put in. Like, I had this expectation. I wanted to be a professional athlete. Mm-hmm. But I always knew, like, I didn't really fully want that. So, right. because at the end of the day, you give up everything. For sure. You give up everything. For sure. So, That's like, my, success. Exactly. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't give up everything. Yeah. So, like, I have to also be okay with, are you giving up 90, 95%? Yep. You got to be realistic with that. Yep. So, um, with, with, with that, like, I just, yeah, like, I was just willing to give up a certain amount to like, get to where I was. Yep. High school, the goal was to qualify for nationals and be on a national stage. College, the goal was to just be the best mm. at wherever I was. Okay. And like, and that's kind of how it, because I'm like, to be as good as Usain Bolt, I realized from an early age, I was like, damn, this shit, yeah. I don't know if my hammy, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. I agree, you know, mm. so like, I think that there, there was, I guess there's a realization now that we, we're having this conversation, I guess there's mm-hmm. a realization in every athlete's life where it's like, man, like, yeah, some dudes work hard, right? Mm-hmm. But like, and a lot of people work hard, I'm not negating that, but yeah. there are some dudes that wake up and they can really do this shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, so really it's like, do it. Um, I think in my career, and like a lot of people are like, dude, like how did you go from playing basketball to just completely cold turkey? Yo, I'm done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, okay, look, when the ball stops bouncing, it stopped bouncing. Facts. You know, and it's just like, well, can I live with the dude that stays out till five in the morning, gets mm-hmm. hammered, and he drops 40 the next day, and I work mm-hmm. my ass off, I put up a thousand shots mm-hmm. uh, the day before, and I'm still missing. Yeah. Right. And this dude is just money. Like. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, like it's just like just put it there and it's over. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, well, what okay. other gifts can we tap into? And I think that um, you've done an amazing job of tapping into Thank your you. different gifts. But um, let's walk people through it, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I know you went to you went to BC, yeah. right? You kicked ass there. Yeah, it was broke cool. all the records. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, okay, I'm better than you, dude. As soon as I get healthy, I'm gonna show you what's up. Yeah. So let, let, let's stick into that chapter for a second. What's it like? You step into BC. What's it like for you? It was. It was uh, it was one of the biggest wake up calls. Like mm-hmm. in so many different ways. Like BC was like a humbling slash open eye opening experience because humbling in the sense where, <clears throat> well, let me talk eye opening. Like okay. because you just get out the house. Like it's my first time fully getting out the house. Yeah. Like I'm like, <laughs> yo. Uh, I still remember being out and I still check my phone. Like, it's 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't have to like, be No one good? checked no for me. Yeah. Like, like, and kind of being in that, like, is she go, my mom going to call me? Yeah. Like, am I in trouble? Like, and like, being like two o'clock, like, I'm outside. No, like, Streetlights are on. Like, are like, on. <laughs> like, and that was, so that was eye opening for me. And like, a very, like, it was just amazing. Like, and then you, you can go back and you have a, a home. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're, and your parents ain't your there. Boy. Like, it's crazy. You can yeah. have anyone. Like, so all these things I have to slowly get used to. Like, because you kind of, you live, you're like, yo, um, what y'all doing after? Well, we can go to, no, we can go yeah, to my crib. Can. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got open crib. Like, like yo, bro. like, what's good? <laughs> like, so that, um, I, I loved those, like, first moments. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think I will forever, like, cherish those, um, but then it was also eye-opening, like, the amount of workload it was. Like, yeah. to be a student athlete there, like, any any person who graduates from that school as a student athlete and does it well, right? both, yeah. like, I'm not talking about you just, you did the sport, you did the school, yeah. did it well, yeah. it's very, it's very challenging. Yeah. Like, because a lot of kids fail off, a lot of kids fail first semester, a lot of kids just scrape by, like, yeah. you know? And, like, I was in the business school, which was the hardest one at that school. Like, wow. we were ranked third in the country. Kids go there just to be in the business school. Course, Kids fly out internationally just to be in the wow. business school. Wow. So that wasn't my main focus. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to, yeah, trying yeah. to get the records. Right, like, right, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> but I'm still trying to get, do, get an A in this class. I'm getting the records class. over here, like, too, though. Yeah, I'm getting like, records on both sides. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, so that's, that's not talked about a lot, right? So mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you, you know, recall, but if you remember, like, what your schedule was on a day-to-day basis, what did it look like being a student athlete? Seven. So I probably woke up around six or seven most of the time, like, um, and then usually my class, I had to always have 8 a.m. classes. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was always up early. That was just a given. I had no choice because yep. we had practice. Um, practice was at noon. Yep. I came in at 11, 1030 if I could, um, so I can get PT for about an hour, hour and a half. And then practice was at noon every day. Finishes at 3. Yep. Um, or finishes at, like, 2. You can leave at 3. Yep. Um, and then classes start at 3. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's full days, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you guys have, like, study hall and everything else, mm-hmm. right? So, it's so like, the, the crazy thing about the track team, we didn't even have mandatory study halls. Really? Because 
we're such a well academically stand. Our average GPA on the team was like a three point three. Got it. So Got like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kids there, no one's <laughs> serious. Like, yeah, it's like where they are. if you fail, and people are like. You don't even want people just to know you on the academic yeah. probation. Like, why are you going on the track team, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's <laughs> you better get them good grades. You ain't going in professional. See, that's, that, that's, just like, a little, that's a little different than basketball, yeah. man. I know we had, we had a minimum of like eight hours a week, right? Mm-hmm. So I know like uh, typically we had at least two hours of study hall that we had to do with the team. And then I know like afterwards, right? It's just, mm-hmm. it's no it's no different than sports, right? Yeah. So it's like just how you have practice, right? After practice, you have to put in that extra work, right? Exactly. So um, I know in a lot of cases, we would find like study buddies or we would mm-hmm. just try to figure out how to collaborate or innovate and um, find different ways to be able to mm-hmm. push the agenda forward, right? You have it, to it's collaborate the only way. on, like, it's, I was always collaborating with kids. Like, I think that's also what kind of improved my social skills because like, and I think team building because yeah. I'm like, yo, Y'all, y'all, y'all trying to finish this homework later? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, I know the teacher. I, I'm on chapter three. Yeah, like, you know, I got like, two hours today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and she said, yeah. <laughs> total, like, there's nothing. I don't have more than two hours That's right. if I want four hours of sleep yeah. before this meet tomorrow. So, like, we got to collab. Like, <laughs> So, let's, 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 let's jump into after college, right? So, you understand, like, team building. You understand uh, time management. You understand mm-hmm. uh, collaboration. How do you transition from being a top tier athlete into mm-hmm. the business world? What's your first step? Where do you go? Yeah, so uh, internships. Okay. Yeah, I started getting internships. Like, or I'd always been working. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I got my first job at like twelve or thirteen. Like, oh, wow. I was mowing lawns, yeah. like walking dogs, doing yep. that whole thing. And then I got a job uh, when I was thirteen at this uh, at this tuck shop. So oh, wow. like every prom season, I'd be in that shop working yep. hours, and like yep. I'd make bank. Like, yeah. So I'd be chilling. I'm like, yeah, yeah, problem. And I get a free, I had to get the flies. And that, these are the things that kind of built me early on because I worked at a tuck shop. Yeah. Who's walking in with the flies tucks? You already know Obi. Course, I gave course, y'all course. everything else and yeah. I saved that one for yeah. me. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that one. That, someone, that one, no, 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 no. Yeah. I don't think that one. It ain't available. Yeah. And it, it wouldn't look good on you anyway. Exactly. You know like, I mean? like, we don't got your size. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell you my size. We don't got it. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. You're 36. <laughs> I did this all day. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not for you. It's like, not for you. That's fine. That's So, like, I got nice tuxes. I think every year until I was like a junior for free. Mm. Like, um, so like, you know, that, that added a, you know, a little sauce and confidence in the town, but I always, always just worked like, and then by the time I got into college, um, I'd got an internship at Ernst & Young, which okay. was like one of like the big four accounting firms. So I worked there for two years and that was great because put money in my pocket and then also let me know what I didn't want to do. Yep. And then yeah. <laughs> Which is also as, as important as knowing what you want to do is understanding what you don't want to do. Yeah. It was very important. Like I'm, I got, I was super lucky because most people don't get their internships till junior year. Mm-hmm. I got that internship sophomore year, like oh, an wow. exclusive program where they bring in 10 kids. Like, yeah. So I was, I was blessed like, because yeah. I met some amazing people uh, through that program. And like, then it got me the job junior year. We were just, we like we we came in vets into yeah. the internship. Like yeah. imagine an internship and y'all walking in like y'all own the place. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like y'all worked here for one summer. Yeah. <laughs> but you know everyone, right? I you know everyone. Work. Like yo, what's up, y'all? Yeah. They're, they're like oh, how's your internship? Oh yeah, we've been here for a year. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> did, did you meet yeah. Carl? Yet? What's up, Jim? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like we already got our own handshake. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, no. So it's just like we 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 walked in there and then. The interns that were already there, we were actually the cool interns, like mm. because they did this black exclusive program. Oh, really? So it was like the coolest kids from the, from all the best schools. So That's like, fire. and we were all athletes too. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. the football players, like I'm, like the basketball players, like cool. and all like one. I remember um, one of the guys. Uh, he uh, he was like friends with um, like like. Uh, his brother or cousin was on the Celtics at the time. Oh, wow. So, like, the Celtics players, like, he was, like, cool with all yeah. of them. And so it was just, like, it was just one of those things. We'd pop up into the club. Oh, like, man. And we were, we were kids at that age making, what, like, four or five grand every right. two weeks? And I, I mean, every month or 20. We're in, and we're living at bro, home. Bro, like, bro. And, we're, and then, bro, we're working overtime hours. So oh, we're yeah. really, some of us were really making, like, three, four grand a yeah, week. And, yeah. like, when you don't have expenses, like, that's the world. Bro, so take me back to that time, right? Bro, now. like, I would right? do anything to go back to that time. <laughs> like, what are all these bills? What are we doing, right? Bro, I felt, I never felt, like, that was rich. I was like, yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. We go, because, like, Monday through Friday, you grind. That Friday, Saturday, yep. that was. Yeah. 
I mean, talk about being big man on campus, right? Like, I mean, your, your card works. You can do anything. Exactly. Right? <laughs> that, 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 you can call an Uber, bro. Uber was just Uber. You, Uber. You're the man. Yeah. Yeah. Just call it yeah. an Uber. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Like, oh, we didn't know how to get. I thought we were gonna have to take the yeah. train. <laughs> at that point, you're like, man, look, it's cold. Yeah, I don't want to do this. Like, mm-hmm. look, I got it. Yeah, it's cool. Let's yeah. just go. Everybody, come on. All right, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that probably goes back to what you were talking about. So let's just talk about the power and the quality of building mm-hmm. relationships. Like, what impact has relationships had in your life? Oh, everything. Like, and I think I learned building relationships because when I started building businesses and needed other people's helps. Mm-hmm relationship was everything so like in college i started an entertainment company so i was throwing some of the biggest events in school wow. then i was also brand ambassador for some a lot of big brands like i didn't even realize at the time it was so casual to me yeah. that i was just getting this stuff yeah, but yeah. it wasn't a thing like right, right, right. It, like i wasn't in the social media realm but i was doing social media things so like red bull sent was wow. sending me cases yeah. coca-cola yeah. like these companies, yeah, yeah, send me clothes, free stuff, and I'm just spreading it around campus, not uh, even knowing. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah. they're that's, I'm, cool. that's if you look at it now, that's a brand investor. Course, like, whatever. like, and uh, yeah. I'm not even realizing. So at that time, I just thought it was cool. My like, bet, like, yeah. and athletes weren't getting paid. So like, any way to kind of get a brand attached to you was kind of cool. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of how I started doing team building because I started throwing events and I realized. Mm-hmm. I can't promote an event to 500 or 1,000 people by no myself. Like, no I need the top guys in each space. So I started just hiring people to work with me. Yeah. And like we started building and building. And like I started seeing I would make way more money just by helping other people. Yeah. And it was just indirect. Or it'd just be at the most randomest thing. Like, yo, bro, good looks for that event three weeks ago. Bro, you, like, yeah. bro, we would have not got in. Yo, my boy just sent you 200. Bro, what? Yeah. For what? Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. bro, you don't realize, like, no, he bought this table. They ended up getting, and, and you're like, oh, sh- sh- I wasn't even doing it for that. But yeah. thank you, like, <laughs> 200, that. I'm rich yeah, for a month yeah, in college. Yeah, right like, on time, right like, on time. Like, right on time, like, <laughs> perfect. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah. just little things like that, I just realized, like, all blessings, whether they're in front, whether they're delayed, or whether they don't happen, mm-hmm. it doesn't even matter. Like it's matter. just about the sheer fact of doing it. And like honestly, I got excited seeing how happy people were. Of like, course, yeah. I think throwing an event, you see, when you can see five hundred to thousands of people happy in an event that you're throwing, and like it was cool. I wasn't throwing just random events in college. Like right. I was trying to partner up with the big dogs in mm. in, uh, in town, and like I was always into music, so I booked Chance the Rapper, oh, Chain fire. Smokers, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like Chance the Rapper when he just had Acid Rap, yeah, like yeah, like Cocoa fire. Butter Kisses, like yeah, I was, yeah. I'd been listening to him, Tyler the Creator, that's Earl hard. Sweatshirt, all that's the, hard, and yeah. then to Lady go back and work with them years way down the line, it's yep. like this full circle experience, I'm like, bro, I've been tapped into y'all since I was like 11, That's like 12. Right. Like, it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's cool though, right? It's cool at the same time. So it's like, okay, cool. Um, I'm doing this entertainment business. How do you, how do you like, how do you start to be like, yo, like I'm actually a pretty decent looking person. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, like brands not only should want to work with me, but then you, you went down the path of modeling. How do you, how does yeah. one even get into modeling? How does that, how, how does that work? It was, uh, there's, there's like two people who kind of gave me that confidence. There's, okay. there's my friend, John Vaughn who I always thank for because he was a child model and his sister was a, was a big time model um, wow. early on in her career. He gave me a lot of confidence. He goes, bro, you should do this, you should do this. I'm like, yeah. nah, 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 I'm just, I'm playing sports. He's like, yeah. nah, nah, but you know, she might end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case it <laughs> you know, ends. Like, he was always kind of like that person, I didn't want to hear it, but he's like, you know, you, no, you great. Yeah. But you might also be great at something else too. And like, but normally, I think at first I would take offense to things like that because I'm like, oh, you don't believe I'll become a professional. And that was kind of like an edge thing for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all don't think I can become a professional? Yeah, yeah, Watch yeah, me. Yeah. And then you have your athlete realization mm-hmm. and like, you know, your humbleness through that. So and then my friend Melissa, who was like probably one of the first people to ever pick up a camera and take a picture of me, like That's a cool. professional picture of me. <laughs> so like she took a picture of me for an internship with Kenneth Cole. Oh, wow. She interned for them junior year. And... She ended up, her, that picture, the, or the photo shoot that we did, which was, like, just outside of, like, the dorm on the last day before we were about yeah. to move out, ended up being, like, this photo that was repurposed and used as, like, for multiple presentations for Kenneth Cole. And he really liked it. Yeah. And when she kept on telling me he really liked it, 
me and the, during during that time, I was also I also had money from my internship, so yeah. I started. I was I used to buy like J Crew Banana Republic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just started buying all Kenneth Cole my yeah. junior year, of course. Yeah. And then she started selling me all that. So it just developed this secret back love for fashion, but then also this like love for like, damn, like someone this great actually likes a picture of me. Yeah. Like I'd never been admired in that way to like, just like from someone who's actually in fashion. So like. I think those thoughts started circulating my my head my senior year of college, and then I did really well my senior year of college. Like it was my best year in track ever. That's like, cool. like my best year like in college. Like period. Like yeah. got the internship, got the great job. Like coming out, just everything, everything yeah. worked. Like, and then, um, but then there was still something that was unsettling. I was like, I was like, I don't, I don't know why I feel like I can do this. Yeah, like it was yeah, just kind of yeah, like this yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know why. I you was had like, fresh itch. You, had yeah. you were like, ah, like I've, I've done it, and it's just like it, it, it's really destiny, mm-hmm. right? At the end of the day, it's like we all have a purpose in life, and like some things we're just destined to do. And I think that regardless if you were, you know, E and Y, or if mm-hmm. you did anything else, right? You were just curious what could be over there, mm-hmm. right? And I think that curiosity really leads to a lot of successful people because you're so curious. You're like, I won't stop until I get this answer, mm-hmm. right? And I think that when you talk about your story from sports and being able to be have your back against the wall and say yo can I do this yeah right and being able to run through that wall you've been able to do that academics you said hey look I've been a top tier athlete but I can also be a top tier student as well Facts. you've done that right mm-hmm. so then uh, in the fashion world and being a brand ambassador you're like these brands continually look mm-hmm. to me yeah to be the answer to their problem mm-hmm. for a specific reason so you're like I'm gonna run through that wall too but now we have not water yeah Tell me about not water what's the name what's the brand what's the drip let's talk about it let's talk <laughs> yes. about it yes sir so so not water stands for not neglecting our talents willing to take risks coincidentally right yeah you see like, what I'm exactly so I was like <laughs> honestly the name came the name was accidental in the way I stumbled upon it but the meaning was always there mm-hmm. and I just and God landed me towards the name mm-hmm. um so I still remember the day I, I still, rem- it was, it was the weirdest day. Like I was at that time I was living in Beverly Hills okay. um, with my, with my homie, Tim, we had a crib over there and Frank and I remember walk. I used to always take these morning walks. Yeah. Like, it was so beautiful. Like the morning <laughs> walks were dope. Like, <laughs> yeah. morning walks in Beverly Hills. Not like too bad. <laughs> like, I'm, not like too it was really, d- so I was just come, I was, uh, the stairs, it was these long, long stairs. Like if you've ever been to that crib, walk all the way down and then there's a hill and i remember right when i opened the door this gush of like water just streamed down the hill mm. and i remember just being like almost like thrown back by it but then like the way the rocks were set up in like the just like i almost call them barriers to entry they were blocking the water mm. and like it was stopping different paths but it was still going wow and i and i was just like i was like yo that shit is water yeah (laughs) like i was like because the water it it didn't matter what was in front of it it was still going i was like yo that shit is like not even water like but the second i said it i was like not even not water and i wrote it down i was like i like that i like that and then i just came about it later because i I was already in the process of trying to find a name for the company That's cool. and I was just like doing things but none of the names were sticking I called my sister and was like yo I thought of the name it's not water she's yeah. like alright what does that yeah, mean, what does that mean? <laughs> I love it like cool she's like so now you have to build a brand behind yeah. it now you gotta do this I was like yeah but the name you don't get it like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's locked in your head yeah you know, it was already start, locked you're in. starting to develop your thoughts and you're like look it's, it's not water this is what we're going to do this is mm-hmm. who we are right so now you have your brand you're starting like what was the first collection like to even drop that what was the investment what was the time what, what did it look like yeah so the first collection it started off with eyewear okay. um so eyewear was accidental mm-hmm. like i wanted to do clothing but um i don't i think for me with the whole fashion space i didn't realize how much work it actually took like so, I was like, oh, I'll just make the clothes, make the, uh, the glasses, the bags, everything. You know, yeah, yeah. I'll be ready at the same time. Yeah, like, yeah. and then the production said, wait, <laughs> that's not how that's it works. Not, yeah. so, like, that's not how this product development. There's quality testing. Mm-hmm. Like, not the first product you order isn't going to be the product that makes your brand. So it's like I went through the rigorous, just learning process of like what fashion could be, and then. You know, eyewear was the first thing that finished. Wow. So, and then it was summer. Yeah. So it was just Perfect like, timing. yeah, I was like, the yeah, brain yeah, got to yeah. start now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm not about to drop eyewear in the winter. Like, yep. I didn't want to launch it in the winter. It's mm-hmm. okay to drop pieces in the winter that are eyewear, but when you're more established, you can do something. But to launch it, I knew it had to be in the summer. Like, that's cool. So, started off, and 
you know, that's kind of how Not Water uh, w- was born from there. That's fire. So, yeah. what do we, so what do we have coming? I mean, I know you're wearing a drip. What's mm-hmm. coming? Obviously, we're in the Beverly Center. Let's mm-hmm. make sure that people know they can yes. come here and pick up your gear. But like, um, I know you had a recent announcement with your eyewear, but then mm-hmm. also, let's just talk about the brand. What do we have coming? Yeah, so right now, our eyewear is in, uh, t- like, basically uh, TJX in uh, Canada. Yep. So we're in 500 stores. So TJ Maxx owns TJX, which okay. is like, so... <laughs> TJ Maxx is like the American division, and then okay. TJ, they have divisions in Europe, and then divisions in Canada. So we start off with a division in Canada, okay. and we're in 500 stores there. Okay, with like okay, okay. Home Goods, Home Sense, Marshalls, and like basically all their kind of like it's Canadian incredible. stores. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then so that's our eyewear, and then our clothing is in here, uh, Beverly Center, yep. and then we're in. Um, what store in the Beverly Center? So uh, 8586. 8586. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're, okay. they're on the sixth floor, right next to Bloomingdale's. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they can check it out here, and then we're also in like a small boutique uh, called Dresscue, and then we're gonna be. You know, I'll wait till they announce it. Okay. What about online? Is there an online presence that we can shop? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we sell we sell online. Um, yeah, and that's usually where we sell usually sell the most, like okay. online. So okay, okay, yeah. okay. So for someone that wants to get in touch with you, someone that wants to stay in touch with you, and really just follow you on your mm-hmm. progress, not only with Not Water, but also with your brand activations and all that you have going mm-hmm. on, what's the easiest way to stay in touch? Yeah. So I would say. Um, we have a very good social media team. So okay. if you hit us up on our IG, yeah. if it's not me, it's going to get to me. Like, you know, so like, you know, our, our team's really good. So like on IG, but even for my personal, like, I think, I think for me, it's like, I grew up on the East coast and like, yep. I grew up in a very different culture. So I never really get caught up in like, I want to service and connect with people. And especially from the brand side, <laughs> I'm usually like, like, I'm usually more shocked that people like my brand yeah. than like I'm u- than I'm like cocky about it in the sense where you know I like where it's like I've been humbled in it and like it's something that I do out of like love and spirit. I always mm-hmm. say I'm like um like I remember when I ordered my last collection, every single piece I was like, well, no one buys it. At least I got That's inventory for life. Yeah. Like, like, like there was there was a weight lifted off my shoulder because yeah. I was like, I would legitimately wear this for yeah. the rest of my That's life incredible. if no one bought it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I don't think you had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you had that problem. People yeah, bought the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so they thankfully didn't have the problem. But thankfully, yep. I'm not having the problem. Um, but it's just a show, like you know, I love wearing my stuff, That's like, fine. and I. You know, it's like it has a special place in like my heart. Every single piece, like so. Whenever people like it and have something to say about the brand, yeah. I'm actually open ears. Like I actually want to hear all the different types mm-hmm. of interpretation, how it resonates with you, how it makes you feel, because yeah. um, it actually helps me learn about the brand. Because I'm also building it in real time too. Uh-huh. So, um, not water. It's about being flexible, about being flowing. So, from the source of it, I also have to be flexible and flowing to what people have to say like of course, people yeah. tell me like oh we'd like to see more of this like a big thing we start off with three pairs of glasses a black white and red wow our audience told us we wanted to see more colors mm-hmm. in every single t- and that's why like those black mirror frames are, yeah. that's why we have those frames that Got frame it. would have not existed Got if it. it wasn't for if i was like no i'm doing it this way super rigid yeah, yeah. like but no people i i saw the comments i saw the dms yeah. i saw the personal messages like bro like i love this but like man this would look killer in all black mm-hmm. this would look killer i'm like okay like, bro, you should have more color variations. Like, I see Not Waters, like, you guys having so much pop, like, being able to get all the standout pieces. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I'm I'm understanding how people are perceiving the brand. That's incredible. So, like, yeah, yeah constantly I'm I'm not one of the... And I hope I can stay at that. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Back I want to be coachable. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to coach me to the brand. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> help me help you. Help, help me, you. exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's like, Because that's what it's all about. Like, I want to create high-quality pieces mm-hmm. that help people feel more confident and empowered because like I'm letting y'all know yeah. when I wear this out I'm sorry like yeah. <laughs> I, I already I already know I'm him yeah, I already yeah, know yeah, I was yeah, him yeah, yeah. and then I became him yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like well, it's, nothing, it's nothing like this on the market I there's mean, nothing I'm, like it's, it it's so it's like custom piece right mm-hmm. um 
So okay, let's. Uh, I guess let's wrap here, man. So, yeah. so if there's if there's one thing that you've learned, whether it's being in the fashion industry or being an athlete or just mm-hmm. in everything, uh, everyday life, what do you want to leave the people with? That's just like, hey, man, like these are the pillars of life, or this is something mm-hmm. I've learned through sports, through business, through fashion. Um, what's that for you? Yeah, I I feel like um, <clears throat> there's probably like multiple pillars. Like I think maybe from sports, like a big thing that I learned is like like consistency, mm-hmm. like hard work and like honestly sacrifice nothing will come if you don't sacrifice Mm -hmm. like you know if you're not willing to give up almost everything to get probably like you have you have to really ask yourself what you're asking for and i think when i started to have those humble conversations with myself it's like bro what do you really want yeah and i I, when i settled on like all right bro you want to be a professional this is what it's going to take and i was like all right you want to be the best college this is what's going to yeah. All right, you want to be the best at your school? This one take. Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah I can do yeah, that yeah. one. Of you know, course. so it's like just figuring out what you really want, and then being realistic with yourself. And it does being realistic with yourself doesn't mean you taking yourself from like, oh, I don't. It's not you saying you don't think you can do it, but it's just being re- with expectations. Totally. Like you know, like if you don't have good expectations or you don't mitigate, you're going to be miserable. Totally. And I think it's very easily for athletes to be miserable and fall yep. prone to like things like depression, mm-hmm. like anxiety. Mm-hmm. There's so many things I had to deal with as a college athlete that, yep. you know, I'm just learning to deal with better now. And I honestly, I'm glad that I had to deal with all of them because it's made me hundred percent better now. So um, I think just finding your happiness in it. I think I, I saw a crazy cover on, on YouTube that I was like, I, Without even watching it, I already know what he's about to talk about. Like, yeah. It was Carmelo Anthony. Who was like, I found like I'm. He was like, I'm still a champion. Like even without the rings without or something. Ring, yeah. And like because he's like he found peace. Mm. He found peace in that sport, and he you can't leave that sport without finding peace. Or you're gonna be it's bitter. True. You're gonna be sorry. Like so many kids like from my college right now. If you ask them yeah. about their experience, it's gonna be completely different from my experience. Mm-hmm. I left mm-hmm. this sport peaceful. Yeah. I yeah, 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 I yeah. I left a record holder. Mm-hmm. I left a winner. Yeah. I left setting every goal I wanted to. Wow. But if I if I had set my goal like, all right, if I don't become an Olympian out of college, I'm so, not happy, then what would have happened? Yeah, yeah. No matter what I accomplished, if I didn't accomplish that, I would have not been happy. Without a doubt. So it's like it's just a say just Figure out, like, you know, just be realistic with yourself That's and right. then find that groundingness and that happiness. And it doesn't mean, oh, like, when I when I was being realistic with myself and said, oh, I'm not going to be an Olympian. I'm just going to be uh, the best at my school. Right, right. That didn't mean I, like, I was like, oh, I'm going to work out seven days a week. Now yeah. it's going to be six. Like, yeah, no, yeah, I was yeah. like, no, I'm going to still go for wow. it. Like, wow. I yeah. still fully went for it. Yeah. But it, it was just in the in the mind, like, bro. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And like, I, I think that so often we forget that, man, mm-hmm. in life there's going to be obstacles, yeah. right? In entrepreneurship there's going to be obstacles, mm-hmm. right? Um, but it doesn't mean that we're not great. We are great, yeah. right? And I think that when we constantly set these different goals, we don't have to uh, stick a timeline. So often mm-hmm. we put this timeline and it's fictitious, yeah. right? At the end of the day, it's something <laughs> that we came up with in our mind. I think you said it best when you said, hey, look, I'm going to have this fashion line, mm-hmm. right? And you say, look, I have eyewear, I have bags, I have clothes, I have all this stuff that I want to launch at the same mm-hmm. time. But are you unsuccessful because you launch eyewear first? No, you're going yeah. to launch the most unbelievable eyewear brand. Mm-hmm. And you're going to open it up to the world and allow them to receive Facts. and give you feedback, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that so often we set these goals. So what, you know, it's 2023, um, it's early June for us. But man, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, what we accomplish in June, right, has has an impact for us to be able to build momentum Facts. for July, for August, mm-hmm. for September, for October, right? So mm-hmm. let's use these opportunities to build momentum. Let's, let's not so let's not be so keen and so focused on that timeline. Mm-hmm. Let's be f- keen and focused on building that momentum exactly. time and time again and surrounding ourselves around people that we can hold accountable mm-hmm. but can also hold us accountable for important. our goals and for our mission. And man, mm-hmm. like um, since knowing you, it's been a pleasure because man, just seeing you speak your goals, but then also seeing you continually elevate. I'm like, mm-hmm. damn, Obi, what can't you do? You know what I mean? So man, like just being <laughs> able to support bro. and share your friends, man, and you just opening up this opportunity for us to be mm-hmm. able to experience you, to hear your story, and ultimately being able to grow with you. Um, you I can't bro. thank you enough. So let's let's put a pen in it. Yeah, <laughs> let's use this as a checkpoint. Mm-hmm. And guys, feel free to support Not Water. Mm-hmm. Um, they supported us in this network, but most importantly, let's get back. Because having the ability to give back to people that you care about, um, that care about you, and that man, 
I mean, this is just the, the epitome of greatness. Um, I can't thank bro. you enough, bro. So no, I appreciate time, you, bro. dog. Thank you, Nigel. I really appreciate <laughs> no, you, dog. Of course, like, man. For real. Of course. I'm of course. glad we made this happen. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> it's been a lot my of fun. guy, he about to be on the go. So <laughs> I caught him not on the go. I, I put a pin <laughs> on his movement. So no, I appreciate it. Man, for it's sure. all love, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Of course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>